Imagine if you could trade your freedom, your ability to move, and give it to an animal so that they could live their true freedom. Would you do it? Right now I'd like you to meet Luke. Hi, my name is Luke. I'm 25 and I live in northern New South Wales in Australia. I was in a car accident in 2013 and as a result I am now a paraplegic with uh, an acquired brain injury in mid-March of 2017. Um, I had a suicide attempt um, which resulted in two months in a psychiatric hospital. One thing that one of the nurses there said was, Luke, you need to live for something. The macaw was it. I look at it as I can trade the mobility that I've lost and give it to another creature. Um, which gives me purpose in life. So free flight became everything to me. So day one of Dave being over here, um, started out like every other day and then I drove up to pick him up from Brisbane um, and in the car trip on the way back we just sort of ran through what we'd be doing and Dave in one of his first interactions with Sammy spoke about her being better than he thought. And then he said, let's take her outside. And I thought, um, what? I, I didn't think we'd go outside on the first day. And it was incredible. Within, you know, a few hours of him being home, my bird was flying outside, which was the best feeling ever, as well as the most terrifying feeling ever. Can we um, put your dog outside? Is that all right? Yeah, bro. Outside, go on. No. You this way? Sammy doesn't like when you're around. Oh. Go on. <laughs> <laughs> you're right. See? Yeah. See, she's getting good with the off the shoulder. Yeah. So the reason she went there is that's where the treats were. Yeah. Part of the reason I trained her this was so I didn't have to move. Sammy! Sammy! Nice. It wasn't really graceful, but you're handleable. Sammy Maybe. doesn't do graceful. <laughs> A baby. Sammy! It, are they normally as clumsy as her when they're babies? Like
Switch outside for a second. So come a little closer. Control. All right, can you back up a tiny bit? So then over the next oh, few days, we would just push her a little bit further and a little bit further with A to B's until we got quite far. Here she comes. <laughs> I'll grab her. Hey baby. Flying today, huh? All right, why don't we do this? Why don't I take her and we'll do a little bit of hide and seek. And so stay roughly where you are. Think, think you're ready for hide and seek? Huh? <laughs> so Luke is hiding and Sammy's gonna go find him. You ready? Alright, Luke's getting set behind me to a new spot. So we're gonna do a little more hide and seek. She may have seen where he is, but we're trying to get her skills developed a little bit more so that she can learn to look for him when she's in the air. And she's doing awesome. Nice. <laughs> we would just push her a little bit further and a little bit further with A to B's until we got quite far. And she came in a bit too hot, couldn't really land, got spooked by, I think Dave said there were 15 galahs. Um, they just wanted to play, but Sammy didn't know that. So off she goes into a tree. What do you think, Sammy? Get your GPS. Ah. Think you can find him again? Oh, lorikeets. There are lorikeets. There are little lorikeets. All right.
Well, f And then we begin the, uh, oh, yes, you call it stakeout of just waiting for Sammy to come down oh. out of the tree. And my dog just moved the camera and put me off. Um, anyway, then we, we realized that we could be up near home and see her if we had binoculars. So Dave head starts head into town. I stay behind just to call her every now and then. And um, oh, Dave would have been gone for hour, hour and a half sort of thing. In that time, Sammy tried to fly back to me at the house. And um, the dog <laughs> wouldn't leave her alone. Scared her again. And she circled the house a few times and then flew up the road. And I thought, oh, great. Thank, thank you, dog. And <laughs> then it got worse. It started raining rather heavily so by the time Dave got home I was so waterlogged and probably an extra 10 kilo rather miserable <laughs> well, we needed to get the bird I'm up the road getting wet Dave's up the road with me but in my car not getting wet um, I got bogged a million times, and on the one millionth time, <laughs> I gave Dave a piece of my mind. <laughs> How far? How fast? Yeah. 20? Yeah. <laughs> if I fall over now, this will be really bad. <laughs> like, really, really bad. Yeah, don't turn sharp. Wait, what are you saying? <laughs> I was saying bird tricks is <laughs> Dave turned up, lost me bird. I see her though, she's right there. Oh yeah, I found her. <laughs> and now I'm so waterlogged. Are you stuck? I weigh 10 kilo heavy, I yes, <laughs> I am full. Dave's got my car, all wheel drive, and I've got one front wheel. <laughs> and then I fell over. All right, so it's raining. The weather's been wrong every day, except today. And uh, <laughs> Luke's <laughs> trying to go. <laughs> what happened? I, fell, I got tired. <laughs> It's a weird spot to take a nap, dude. <laughs> I'm wet as is. I can't. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Help. Okay. This is right across the road from my house. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't notice this. I, I noticed stuff that we have to drive to. But wow! There she is. Um, do you think if it is my presence being comforting, do you think if I went that way, so it's a clear shot, but you can still see me leaving? It could work. One of the challenges we're having is that for her to get lift coming out of that tree, the wind's just not the right way. And oh, so okay. that an inexperienced bird's gonna struggle because of that. But it's definitely worth trying. So then in that afternoon, uh, I went up to Sammy again. I got about halfway, called her, and she screamed and screamed and screamed. Then all of a sudden a blue bird turned up. Uh, the dog scared her again. She landed in a tree and then came straight down. She was fine after that. 
So then the next day we realised that she needs to learn how to come out of trees. So we focused pretty well all day on... We, I have some small frangipani trees at the front. And yeah, we were just getting her to come out of those and putting her deeper and deeper into the tree. So she had more and more sticks to come around, but she got it fairly quick. Okay, this is it. Final day here at Luke's house in Australia. Now he has been rocking it and Sammy's been doing awesome too. She's learning all sorts of new skills, but today is Luke's day to uh, kind of do it on his own. I'm going to not coach a whole lot and just kind of watch. Now one of the things I had him do is make a list of kind of a checklist of priorities. One, making sure the dog's away. Very important. And then he's got to go through a series of other things to make sure that he is looking for, and this is kind of an interesting hint for everybody out there, he's going to be looking for reasons why not to fly her. That way he doesn't overlook the possible mistakes as easily. So I think it's going to go really well, but I'm excited for you guys to see. Final day. I was lost and incomplete. So I told Dave in the car on the way back from the airport um, that my goal was to be able to sit outside of a morning with a coffee and have Sammy fly around. And um, today we finally got flights that weren't panicky around the house. She knows that I'll be there you can see when she comes back around the house, she's looking for me. The joy that this has given me, Dave being here, for me to see my bird doing what birds are built to do, flying around, um, it just, I, I don't have words to describe what it does for my psyche, I'm, I feel I'm doing something for the better good. So 
free flight became everything to me. I had nowhere to go, so hey.